decided to sing it, we shall overcome. No, oh, before this victory is won, some will have to get thrown in jail some more, but we shall overcome. Don't worry about us before the victory is won. Some of us will lose jobs, but we shall overcome. Before the victory is won, even some will have to face physical death. Physical death is the price that some must pay to free their children from a permanent psychological death. Then nothing shall be more redemptive. We shall overcome. Before the victory is won, some will be misunderstood and called bad names and dismissed as rabble-rousers and agitators. But we shall overcome. And I'll tell you why. We shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. We shall overcome because Carlisle is right. No lie can live forever. We shall overcome because William Cullen Bryant is right. Truth crushed to earth will rise again. We shall overcome because James Russell Lowell is right. Truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future. Behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. We shall overcome because the Bible is right. You shall reap what you sow. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. With this faith, we will go out and adjourn the counsels of despair. Bring new light into the dark chambers of this
Well, is everybody ready? Good evening. I am Joanne Martin Spear. I'm a retired lieutenant colonel from the United States Air Force, a published author, and I am the current Golden Royalties Chapter Vice President and 2022 Chapter Woman of the Year. I have a long bio, but in the interest of time, Tonight is not about me. It's about our honorees who we are keep who are keeping the dream alive. I will be your mistress for mistress of ceremony for tonight. There are a few changes in the program. Actually, there's more than a few, but we're going to flow right through it as it was written. Uh, the the who's doing it will be changing. Um uh, this program, Keeping the Dream Alive, was birthed from a vision by our Golden Royalties chapter founder, Charlotte Collins. It is the largest scholarship and education fundraiser we have. And what, it, what makes it special for tonight is that it's our Pearl Milestone, 30 years. It's our third year being virtual, and tonight is no different. We have some live and some videoed performances. I can't see all of you or hear you, but I know you are joining me in applause for this epic event. I'd like to welcome you all. Welcome to all the dignitaries, ABWA and Civic, the families, the friends, and the fellow ABWA sisters and ambassadors for taking time out of their schedule to come and support us. I would be remiss if I did not specifically recognize our ABWA National President, Cheryl Blair, our ABWA National Vice President, Rachelle Jameson Holmes, and our National ABWA Secretary Treasurer, Joyce Wright, and our past National President, Trina Nakazi. We, as a chapter, have given over $27,000 in scholarships, and we could not have accomplished any of this without your help and your support. On behalf of the Golden Royalties, allow me to do my best in expressing our deepest appreciation. Whether it was a ticket or an ad or a raffle ticket, tonight you are helping students that will be our future leaders. I hope you're ready for a wonderful salute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the homage we extend to his wife, Coretta Scott King, for the vision to keep the dream alive. I'd like to ask you once again, please mute your devices and place them on speaker view. The Vashon High School Junior Ar Army ROTC cadets will open our program tonight. These youth are instructed by retired Army Sergeant First Class Lorenzo Harris, who retired from the United States Army after 20 years of service. His junior ROTC teaching career began at Beaumont High School, and he later joined the Vashon High School Wolverines Junior ROTC program. That was in 2012. In his words, I am very proud and thankful to have this opportunity to educate, inspire, develop, and prepare our cadets for future endeavors. Vashon High School Junior ROTC Program's activated activation year was 1996. It is a character development program and builds successful leaders for the future. Never deviating from the ROTC mission to motivate young people to be better citizens. Let's welcome the Wolverines as they proudly post our colors. Oh. 
Left, face. Breathe in, cover. Wow, was that not wonderful? There's nothing better than to see our youth already operating in leadership and they stepped up voluntarily and that song was awesome. They've done such a great job and we thank them. We thank you the Wolverines. Before I move on, I've noticed that one of our past national presidents has also joined us, Miss Nancy Griffin, and I would like to recognize her as well. Next, we welcome Miss Jamike Unoke, who is a medical student at Kansas University and has held a 4.0 grade point average for the last two years. She will now render the Negro National Anthem. Well, thank you for having me and happy early MLK Day. Lift every voice and sing to let them heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, 
felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat, had not our weary feet had come to the place for which our Father sat. We have come over a way but the tears have been watered. We have come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who hast brought us thus, far on the way thou who has by thy might led us into the light keep us forever in the path we pray lest our feet stray from the passes our path where we met thee Bless our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. That was wonderful. Absolutely. <clears throat> that was just simply beautiful. And let me tell you, uh, this distinguished young lady right here is also a two-time recipient of the chapter's $2,000 Impact Education Scholarship. So we really appreciate you. Thank you, and thank you so much for you know, the investment that you've all made to my education, it has really made the difference. So I appreciate okay. your help. Okay. This being such a momentous occasion, we have a few congratulatory remarks. Our first is a letter from our National Executive Director, Ms. Renee Street. And uh, Renee had planned to be, be here but she has the flu. So, we are, she sent us a letter, and we're going to read that letter. I'm sorry. To honored members and guests, when the Golden Royalties became a chartered league of the American Business Women Association in 1993, it marked the beginning of a great tradition in the Kansas City region. Not only did members exemplify the mission of ABWA by helping to fulfill the dreams of working women, they also consciously worked to fulfill the dream expressed by Dr. Martin Luther King for equality for all. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the Golden Royalties annual event designed to further the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King and his wife Coretta Scott King. In addition to honoring the legacies of these two inspirational leaders, the Golden Royalties chapter will again recognize community leaders whose selfless actions have had a positive impact on the citizens of the Kansas City community. Congratulations to this year's honorees and all are listed by name. We are extremely proud of the members who volunteered their time and talent required to organize this landmark event on behalf of ABWA's Golden Royalties Chapter. 
ABWA's National Board of Directors and the national team join me in sending our best wishes for what is sure to be another memorable experience on your milestone anniversary. Best wishes, Renee Street, Executive Director, American Business Women Association. Now, how about that? I call it a true honor when the Executive Director congratulates you. And I might add, she also was a Martin Luther King Jr. honoree. Thanks, Renee, for what you have done and for the kind words. <clears throat> we hope you feel better soon. You know, for the past 30 years, you, you, the people, have nominated deserving candidates in the following categories. Music, education, humanitarianism, entrepreneurship, sports, medicine, and health care. And Ms. Laura Nidal, a member of the American Business Women Association and owner of Uniquely Green Eyewear, also has some congratulatory expressions she would like to make. As a past ABWA District 3 Vice President and a 2015 American Businesswoman Top 10, she currently serves as an ABWA District 3 Ambassador, Treasurer in the Dynamic Connections Chapter, and Vice Chair on the Kansas City Area Council Board. She feels that this association has given her the confidence to step out on, of her comfort zone and make her dream of owning her own business a reality. Creating and achieving her goals has been an important part of her life and she now enjoys sharing with others how positive goals can change your life. Laura was not able to be present tonight but she has joined us with her words of wisdom. First of all, I would like to thank the Golden World Chapter of the American Business Women Association on 30 years of supporting scholarships. For 30 years, this chapter has held a Martin Luther King educational event. I have had the honor of attending quite a few of these events and I must say that each year it just gets bigger and better. Um, this chapter in celebrating the life and the accomplishments of Dr. King has made each of us more aware of him as a civil rights leader, a religious leader, and an African American leader. Dr. King shared many of his accomplishments with his wife, Coretta Scott King, and together this couple had a vision. And together they faced and shared many fears, many challenges, and many victories. This couple believed that education was the main tool in helping all of us to become better leaders. But how does the life of Dr. King help each of us become better leaders in our business and in life? David Kirpin has written up seven simple entrepreneur, entrepreneur tips from Dr. King's life. And so I would quickly like to highlight them. Number one, dream big. Dr. King was known for his, I have a dream. But all great entrepreneurs have big dreams and they share this vision with others. So I ask you, what, is, what are you dreaming now? And how will you share it? Number two, persuade without power. Using a nonviolent civil disobedience, Dr. King was able to persuade millions of people into his civil rights movement and to help them share his dream. As an entrepreneur, you have to get a lot of people on your side. And the easiest way to persuade people is number one, be kind. Number two, be passionate. Number three, be supportive. And number four, be grateful. So I ask, how can you persuade without power? Number three, give 
people something to believe in. Dr. King was one of the best leaders in modern history to get everyone to get involved unconditionally and support him. As an entrepreneur, you can and must get people something to believe in. So I'm asking you, what are you giving people to believe in? Number four, embrace your fears and be courageous anyway. Dr. King was very open about his fears. He feared that people wouldn't accept his points. He worried about violence coming. And we need to realize that we all have fears and that's okay. Because Dr. King taught us it's better to admit that fear and find a way to be courageous in spite of that fear. As an entrepreneur and a person who just lives day by day, we all have fears. The fear of running out of money, the fear that people won't support us, the fear, and there are many, many fears that we don't share. But if you embrace those fears, you'll be better off. So how can you embrace your fears? Number five, get everyone involved. Dr. King was able to have a great movement because he was able to get so many people to feel like that they were involved in something bigger than them. As an entrepreneur, you can involve everyone and you should learn from them as well. Every person, every member, every customer has something of value to teach you, but you have to listen and be open to that teaching. So you must remember that you never know when the next great idea will come along. So I ask you, how can you get people involved? Number six, create an urgency. The time is now for you. The time is now to step up and become the leader of your team. Have passion for what you do and for what you believe in and you will create a sense of urgency. And last, number seven, inspire people. Dr. King was so inspiring to so many people, but as an entrepreneur, as a leader, your main job is to inspire. Your job is to inspire your employees, your members, and anyone who will listen about your mission, your product, and your services. We should be thankful to Dr. King for so much, including the thousands of leaders he unknowingly inspired and those that he is inspiring even decades later. In conclusion, I would like to state that these seven steps in many ways reflect the mission of the American Business and Women's Association or ABWA. As we provide opportunities for growth, both personally and professionally, through leadership, through education, through networking support and national recognition. So thank you, Golden Royalties, for giving out so many scholarships and congratulations to those being honored tonight. And I would like to say in closing, and please let me read this because I want to get every word right. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. So I am challenging you and me, let's dream big. That's it. Thank you so much, Laura. That was wonderful congratulation words, truly inspiring us and many others to continue keeping the dream alive. I think that Mayor Garner is on the call. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Well, God bless everyone, and, and thank you for having me. It is such an honor and a privilege uh, to have been invited uh, to share with you uh, just a brief words of welcoming um, to uh, this 30th event, a momentous event when you talk about 30 years, when you, uh, the American Business Women's Association. And I know, and I've, and I've looked, and you all have shared with me that this year's theme is who is keeping the dream alive. And I'm thinking uh, that that's really important when we talk about the efforts that have gone forward uh, with everything that you all continue to do. Martin Luther King said it best when he said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. 
uh, if you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. 30 years uh, is a great way to show that you have moved forward. And I know that uh, the organization and many in the community that, uh, that, that benefit and have benefited and will benefit moving forward uh, will uh, be uh, of great pride and, and honor to have known that you did not stop, that you did not quit, and that you kept doing things uh, to empower um, women uh, in leadership, education, networking, and the support they need to be successful, uh, not just in business, but in life. Um, and as a result, I just want to say on, on behalf of the great people of uh, the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas, um, our elected body, as well as those, uh, those great folks in Wyandotte County that make up um, our community, which is uh, Kansas City, Kansas, uh, Bonner Springs, Edwardsville, and that little portion that we call Lake Quivira. And on behalf of the people of Wyandotte County, I'd like to read you all a proclamation. And the proclamation says, whereas the Golden Royalties chapter of the American Business Women's Association says work hard to collect monies to aid deserving young women in our community to further educational pursuits and to go to college, whereas the Golden Royalties chapter of the American Business Women's Association was chartered on May 8th, 1993 with Charlotte Collins, founder in Wyandotte County of Kansas City, Kansas. And whereas the mission of the American Business Women's Association is to bring together business women of diverse occupations and to provide opportunities for them to help themselves and others grow personally and professionally through leadership, education, networking, support, and national recognition. And whereas the Golden Royalties chapter has hosted an annual educational and scholarship event honoring the life and legacy of the late and great Dr. King Jr. and giving homage to his wife the late Coretta Scott King for the last 30 years. And whereas this organization has awarded over $30,000 in scholarships and grants, national scholarship programs, the Stephen Buford Bufton Memorial Education Fund, SBMEF, to young women in our community to further their educational pursuits and goals. Whereas the 2023 educational and scholarship event honors individuals in the greater Kansas City community who are keeping the late Dr. King's dream alive through their outstanding community service at the Keeping the Dream Alive Award ceremony. And whereas the 2023 Martin Luther King honorees are fully deserving of this award. So I'd like to say now, therefore, I, Tyrone Garner, Mayor CEO of your unified government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas, I wanna proclaim Saturday, January 14th, 2023, as Golden Royalties Chapter Day in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas, in witness thereof of all those in sight and sound of my voice. God bless you, congratulations, and thank you for the hard work that you've done, especially in honor of uh, the late, great Martin Luther King and his wife, Coretta Scott King. God bless you. God bless you, um, Mayor Garner. On behalf of the Golden Royalties chapter, we thank you. We thank you with all of our hearts. We share your goal to keep the dream alive, and we are honored for that wonderful surprise you just gave. And what a surprise it was. Thank you so much. Next in our program, we will have showcasing some very talented youth. We have the students of Sheer Essence School of Etiquette and Leadership Development. Their leader is Evangelist Barbara A. Laura, who is also the founder and CEO. She has a unique background. She served as chaplain assistant, working with the women and men at the Jackson County Detention Center from 1981 until the pandemic pro prohibited her visit. She led a church service every Sunday with the inmates, taught a weekly Bible study class, and provided resource information. She graduated from Josette School of Modeling and Charm. Years later, she opened Sheer Essence School of Etiquette and Leadership Development. She has served young girls, teens, women, and female ex-offenders since 2002. She continues keeping the dream alive by hosting He's Able, a radio program on KGGN. 
in 2018, she also was one of the recipients of our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award. Let's welcome her and the students of Sheer Essence School of Etiquette and Leadership Development as they perform. My name is Adriana Williams, and I'm a Lily Williams. We're keeping the dream alive by Serena Venus Williams. We're working hard in school with a positive attitude and confidence. We will face stumbling blocks in life, but we will keep the faith and they will become our stepping stones to get us to the mountaintop of a successful future. Hello, I'm Jalen Carter. I'm keeping the dream alive. Like Rosa Parks was determined to keep moving forward. For the betterment of the community, we've got some difficult days ahead. But as we stay united together, we'll make a remarkable difference. We all need to be a drum major for justice, peace, and righteousness. Hello, my name is Deanna Byers. I'm keeping the dream alive like Les Brown, a motivational speaker. Keeping a positive attitude, confidence, and trying yourself with the tools you need to be successful in your career. And keep moving forward, stay focused in spite of the obstacles of life. I remember what Dr. King said, you will overcome. What an awesome job, Evangelist uh, Laura. She has worked hard with these young children and many, many, many more. Thank you all for participating in our momentous occasion. You were wonderful. Our next youth is a familiar face to all of Golden Royalty Queens, Michaela Manning. She has been performing for us for the last three years and this year she has added a new talent, guitar playing. Michaela is a 14-year-old student at Washington High School. From a very young age, she has had a passion for being on stage, singing, drumming, and acting. At age three, she starred in her first movie. She has performed and starred in many school plays and has performed on larger stages like Theater in the Park where she had roles in the play Annie Jr. and Frozen Jr. She most recently played in The Wiz as the Good Queen of the North at a Pearl. Then landed the role of Young Seely in The Color Purple. Most of all Michaela loves to express herself in creating music and writing her original lyrics. An honor roll student, Michaela works very hard to be the best she can be in any task she is given. She aspires to become a pediatrician when she grows up. She also enjoys sports. Please welcome this extremely talented young lady, Michaela Manning. Hi, I will be doing a rap and a song selection. So um, I'm going to start off with the rap first. Have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its dream. We will need truth to be self evident. Do you know the real history? Ooh, black history. Ooh, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we? Let me tell you a story about a man who brought unity, equal liberty for you and me. We shall overcome, is what he sings. You guess it, his name is Dr. King. Nonviolence is what modern stands for. It doesn't matter if you're nice or you're hardcore. He came for peace, not to start a revolution. He had a dream for the whole entire nation. He had a dream, but I had to fuss. It doesn't matter if you first you got tossed to the back of the bus. Can't dream about the freedom that you didn't have. And then not listen, you got left in the body bag. The past had to start my nerves. You were back in the restaurant, you didn't even get served. I thank the Lord for the goodness that he brings. Thank the Lord for Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, the real history. 
Oops, black history. Oops, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Do you know the real history? Oops, black history. Oops, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Don't forget about that and so John the truth. Comfort in the bond, they educated the youth. Nikki and Maya, Alice Walker, and Hughes, they are writers, they know throughout all the schools. The moral of the story is so and clear. To teach black history supposed to be all year. Without history, we blind to the facts. Thank the law for black history, and that's what I do. You know, the real history. Oops, black history. Oops, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Do you know the real history? Oops, black history. Oops, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Hey, do you know the real history? Oops, black history. Oops, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Do you know the real history? Oops, black history. Oops, black history. Do you know the real history? Without black history, where would we be? Thank you. That was the uh, rap. Now I'll be singing Stand Up um, by Cynthia Erivo. So let me get that ready. There are many comments in the chat about how wonderful you were. Thank you. <clears throat> I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulder, ooh, a bullet in my gun. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head. Just in case I have to run I do what I can when I can while I can for my people While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on. I could feel it in my bones. <laughs> Early in the morning, before the sun begins to shine, we're gonna start moving towards that separating line. I'm wading through muddy waters. You know I've got a maid of mine And I don't mind if I lose any blood on the way to salvation And I'll fight with the strength that I got until I die So I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, you have freedom calling, calling me to answer. Gonna keep on keeping on. And I know what's around the bend might be hard to face cause I'm alone and I just might fail but Lord knows I've tried sure stars fill up the sky stand up 
Take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on. I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on. I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Going to a brand new home. Far across the river, you hear freedom calling. Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on. I could feel it in my bones. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. That was just awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You just keep excelling. Yeah, all of you that are listening, you better get your autographs now. Because she is destined to be really famous one day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michaela. Of course. Each year during our program, we reminisce about years past, and there's no better way than to let past recipients speak. This year, our 2018 past recipient, Evangelist Barbara Law, has a few words. Let's hear what she has to say. Hello, I'm Barbara Laura. 2018 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Honoree. I want to congratulate all the 2023 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Honorees for your compassion, your leadership, empowering and addressing the needs and concerns of others, and building a stronger community. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you all in all your endeavors as you continue to keep the dream alive. Thank you so much uh, for those encouraging and inspiring words, uh, Evangelist Laura. You know, it's now time for the show me the money. Time to spin that wheel and see who's going to be a dollar or two richer. I know you're on mute. Just nod your heads if you can see my screen. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, this is a 50-50 drawing, and, uh, and we have, I have all of my controls in my way, so I can't see, but we have 72 people's name on the wheel, so they are, they are organized in alphabetical order by the first name and I'm going to scroll through those very slowly so you can make sure if you bought a raffle ticket your name is on there and I'm scrolling okay if you did not see your name and you bought a ticket, come off a of mute and say, wait. I see you, Miss Camille, Lester Young. <laughs> I see you. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle it three times just to make sure everybody's all mixed up. That's one time. That's two times. That's three times. And the next thing I'm going to do is spin that wheel. Are you ready? Yeah, let's hide this. Uh,
No. <laughs> okay, we have a winner. Our past national president, Nancy Griffin. Thank you, thank you. And I would like the honor of donating my 50% back to Golden Royalties. Oh, God bless you. Golden Royalties is so excited about that because this is all for the children. We really appreciate that. I think we have $300. And uh, now we will still have $300. So thank you so much. Well, I was going to say, I know that there's at least one person out there that's happy now, but there's a lot because everybody in our chapter is happy. Thank you so much once again. Many have told me that I was an inspiration in some way or another. But let me tell you, and this is with a serious heart, your next guest defines inspiration with capital letters. Her name is Adrienne Patterson. She's a single, totally blind mother of two daughters and one stepson, age 17, 15, and four. She has two cats that she loves very much as well. She's studying for her bachelor's degree in early childhood uh, special education with a minor in history. She loves basketball, cooking, swimming, skiing, playing the flute and the piano. She also loves to read romance novels, preferably by, defini by but definitely a lot of family oriented Christian novels as well. Adrian is a 2009 Sheer Essence School graduate. She has studied abroad in Europe, London to be exact, for three and a half months in 2018 as a part of the study abroad program for the University of Missouri in Kansas City. She says, being blind has its challenges. But she believes that life is only what you make it. And she strongly believes through Christ all things are possible. Adrian often tells people, don't let your life struggles get you down. Because if you're too invested in the struggles, then you will never have time to stop, smell the roses, and thank God for them, as well as the thorns. Two of her most important passions are singing and working with children, including those with special needs. She is certainly hoping to do just that. She knows no matter what obstacle comes in her way, she will succeed. Adrian also believes that just because she is blind doesn't mean she has extreme limitations. The only limitations she has are being unable to read print and being unable to drive. She aspires to be a role model for the younger generation and in Adrian's words, I am keeping my dreams alive. Since Adrian cannot see us clapping, can everyone please unmute so she can hear our warm welcome Please remute when we finish. Finish. Yay! Yay! Oh, Yay! Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. So we will now enjoy Adrian Patterson with "Rise Up." I do apologize, first and foremost, because I am getting over a cold. So please forgive me. <clears throat> You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round, and you can't find a fighter 
Well, I see it in you, so we gonna walk it out and move mountains. We gonna walk it out and move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up. I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I'll rise up, fly like the waves, I'll rise up, in spite of the ache, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you, for you, for you. When the silence isn't quiet and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe, and I know you feel like dying. But I promise we'll take the world to its feet and move mountains. We'll bring it to its feet and move mountains. And I'll rise up. I'll rise like the day. I'll rise up. I'll rise unafraid. I'll rise up. And I'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you, for you, for you. All we need, all we need is hope. And for that we have each other, and for that we have each other, yeah. We will rise, we will rise, we'll rise, oh, 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 we'll rise, I'll rise up. Rise like the day, I'll rise up in spite of the age. And I will rise a thousand times again. And we'll rise up, rise like the day, we'll rise up in spite of the ache. We'll rise up and we'll do it a thousand times again. And for you, for you, for you, for you. Thank you so much. We want, we want to thank you so much uh, for sharing your story and your talent with us tonight, Adrian. That was outstanding, and I hope you feel better soon, but I appreciate you showing up. Yes, indeed. Adrian was one of the people that called me and said, help me, I can't get in, I can't get in. So she was persistent, and we thank you for getting in and showing out. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, ma'am. We are at one of the most important parts of our program tonight, the honorees. Our commentator was Charlotte Collins, our founder. But Charlotte just got out of the hospital yesterday. And as sisters do, we have Linda Jackson, our president, and Sharice Manor, our protege of the year, filling in for her. But I want you to know, Charlotte was not going to miss this. She is here, but she can't talk. <laughs> I just want you to know that. I present to you tonight our first commentator, Miss Linda Jackson, President 
of Golden Royalties. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you all to our honored guests, our honorees, and everyone within my voice. Thank you so much for attending on this auspicious occasion. Every year, the Golden Royalties chapter hosts an education and scholarship event honoring the King's legacy, while at the same time collecting monies to aid deserving women to go to college. Our chapter supports scholarships to women in Kansas, Missouri, Arizona, and Illinois communities. The call went out several months ago for nominations in the categories of music, entrepreneurship, sports, religion, humanitarianism, community service, medicine, health care, and education. Well, the results are in, and we have honorees. Our first honoree is Yolandia Wood. She is a definitely a lady with many passions and talents. She retired from the United States Air Force as a major after flying many combat missions as a navigator and eventually becoming a navigator instructor. She taught high school in from 2006 to 2010 in St. Charles, Missouri. As a lover of children, she is a member of the Kiwanis Club, which pursues creative ways to serve the needs of children, such as fighting, hunger, improving literacy, and offering guidance. As a certified personal trainer, she instructs workout and health wellness through her business, Workout with Yo. She has also served for multiple years as a tax aid advisor, not only helping individuals with free tax filings, but increasing financial literacy by educating clients about budgeting and retirement planning benefits. She helps maintain and nurture Restoration Ranch, which is over 10,000 square feet community garden and has donated over 2,000 pounds of produce in its inaugural year. Yolandia is very active in the O'Fallon Garden Club and through the Rotary Club, they have transformed a former mobile park to a community garden that not only feeds the community, but serves as a meeting place and photography backdrop. Help throughout the community is an example of how she is truly keeping the dream alive. Congratulations, Yolandia. That can be dangerous for a Toastmaster. <laughs> I just want to thank you very much for this honor. It is an honor to serve and it is an honor to keep Martin Luther King dream alive through my example. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you. And congratulations to you. A well-deserved award. Our next honorees are Vera and her husband, James Willis. Due to illness, Vera could not be with us tonight. Together, they opened the first peach tree restaurant in Kansas City, July 19, 1996. This was formerly known as the Peachtree Buffet of Kansas City. Later, they branched out into four other restaurants throughout the metropolitan Kansas City area. Since opening the Peachtree 26 years ago, she has been a strong advocate for hiring ex-offenders. Her belief is everyone deserves a second chance to succeed. She is passionate passionate about providing for the disenfranchised youth of Kansas City. In the fall of 2015, she launched her greatest achievement yet, Coats for Kids Project. The aim is that no child in the metropolitan Kansas City area will be without a warm, new quality coat in the winter. Since the initiative started, she has donated hundreds of new coats, gloves, hats, and books to the most vulnerable children in the community. 
The Willises are helping keep the dream alive in the category of entrepreneurship. Uh, is James Willis on? I don't think so. Okay. Well, on behalf of the Willises, this is a well-deserved award. They have helped many children in our community, and it is a well-deserved award. And we thank you for all that you do for our community. Our next honoree is Pastor Linroy Johnson. His anointing is spread throughout the community. He is a man. Of after God's own heart. He has blessed many people with his love of Christ and giving spirit, including many children and young adults. He was employed at the American Steel Foundry for over 40 years, where he held the following position, secretary, two terms, treasurer, two terms, vice president of the steel workers, two terms, and later became president. As a union official for 20 years, he helped many. He is also a volunteer for the Madison County Juvenile Detention Program as a court-appointed specialist. There he has mentored young teenagers, preparing them for life's journey mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially. As part of the United Congregation Metro East in the state of Illinois, Pastor Lenoy Johnson ensures equality and fair justice among the Illinois and has even protested for justice at the Illinois Capitol. Additionally, he volunteers for the United Way to allocate various funds for over 26 agencies. His help in the church in the United Way campaign has been immeasurable for all ages. Pastor Lenoy Johnson is truly keeping the dream alive. Is Pastor Johnson on? Yes, he is. Pastor Johnson, would you like to say a few words and congratulations from all of us to you? I just uh, wanted to say I'm grateful, humbly grateful that the Royal Organization Chapter had recognized me as being a servant in the community for over 40 some years now. And I think back, reflect, I'll be brief. So you never ask a preacher to talk. <laughs> I'll be brief, but I was in Washington, D.C. with Jesse Jackson one time, and how much that meant to me. We was protesting affirmative action. Ronald Reagan, the president, decided that it wasn't important. But that meant a lot, and this means a lot, and this will go on the top of my shelf for all the rewards through the years that God has uh, allowed to be given to me. And I thank you all. You're we thank you welcome. and congratulate you. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Pastor Johnson. That is wonderful. And keep up the good work and you are truly keeping the dream alive. Frank White Jr. has proudly served as the Jackson County Executive since 2016. He is the first African-American to hold the position and is committed to building a better and more equitable community. His accomplishments include providing fair living wages to county staff, comprehensive fertility services, and expanded paid parental leave. A proud product of Kansas City's East Side, County Executive White, played 18 years with the Kansas City Royals and is enshrined into the Royals Hall of Fame at Kaufman Stadium. Before major leagues, one of his first jobs was a union laborer working on the upper deck of the unfinished baseball stadium. That gives him the distinction of being the only major leaguer to play in a stadium that he literally helped build. Now he serves as the chief executive of the county that owns the stadium. Because he is phenomenal, he is a phenomenal role model from Lincoln High School of Kansas City, Missouri, 
Mr. White had dedicated 18 years with the Kansas City Royals as an outstanding athlete. And now, as the county executive, Mr. White is committed to building a stronger community as he continues to keep the, dr the dream alive. Thank you and congratulations. Is Mr. White on? No, but he did send some words. Rev, let's hear what those are. Hello, I'm Frank White Jr. Tonight I'm humbled to be the 2023 MLK honoree and gratefully accept this Community Service Sports Award. I would like to thank the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Women's Association for their continued service to our community. I would also like to recognize Barbara Law, who nominated me for this award. I appreciate your support and belief in me. Scripture tells us that the whole much is given, much is required. And I have lived a blessed life. From a kid picking cotton in the second grade South, to living my dream as a professional baseball player in my hometown, to being the first black Jackson County executive. This is Dr. King's dream. So it is my responsibility and desire to give back to my community after all they've done for me. I love helping people. And if I've made a difference in just one person's life, then my life will have been worth it. Thank you so much for this incredible honor. Thank you, Mr. White, for helping to keep the dream alive. I think, Sharice, I think we have a few more that you can tell us about them. Back to you, Madam MC. Well, tonight, like I said, we have uh, sisters that just stepped up just like good Girl Scouts. And uh, Sharice is one of them. I don't think that the president had to do that. She stepped up too. But Sharice is not the president. <clears throat> Sharice is our protege of the year. And she stepped up voluntarily. So I appreciate that. And she's on. Thank you, Ms. Joanne. It's my pleasure to tell you who our next nominee is. Our next nominee is Mr. Harvey Lockhart, nominated by Minister Jermaine Manor in the category of music. Mr. Lockhart speaks of himself perfectly when he says, my purpose is to be an agent of love, healing and understanding. He is a husband and a father, saxophonist, composer, and educator. He is a passionate African-American male artist and educator who is seeking to bring about positive change through his music compositions and the students he teaches. He has invested, he has been invested in by his former teachers on how they inspired him and his peers to rise above nefarious and complicit behaviors that continue to plague our urban communities. Harvey is the founder of Heal Center of the Arts and their mission provides arts education programs after school and during school vacations to middle and high school students. He connects the talented youth to local professionals in their sectors so that students may have deeper mentorships. Harvey is achieving his goal to make today's young, <clears throat> excuse me, to make today's young people great leaders and innovators of tomorrow. He has prepared hundreds of students for college, auditions, juries, and life. He's very intentional about bringing these resources to the underprivileged and underserved communities. Mr. Harvey Lockhart is definitely keeping the dream alive. I'd just like to thank you Mr. all Lockhart, for you have uh, any words? recognizing the work that I'm doing. And thank you to my good friend, Jermaine Manor, for nominating me. Uh, you know, those of us that are out here doing the work, you know, we never seek to be recognized, but it's always good to be recognized, um, not just for the things that we're doing, but the impact that we strive to do in our communities. So we thank you all for your support and thank you all for doing what you can do. What we all can do is make a difference. And thank you all. And I look forward to working with more of you in the future um, in some in any way that I could in, in the future. So thank you so much for um, this award. Thank you. On behalf of our chapter, you are welcome. Our next honoree is Vivian Moore, nominated by Dagny Barton in the category of entrepreneurship. Although Vivian owns a store to make money, she is still one of the most giving people. 
Her latest endeavors are under the umbrella of V More Enterprises, LLC. She is the founder and director of the Christian Business Organization, whose purpose is to advance more businesses to the Christian community through resources, education, services, and connectivity. She has a heart to serve many, as many people as possible. As owner slash operator of Divine Thrift and Consign Retail Shop, which she opened in 2020, she takes proceeds from the sales of items and donates to support local organizations. The impact is felt by many women and children throughout the community and surrounding area. Although her business is young <clears throat> because of her giving, she has over 600 customers and 82 consigners. And that does not include those who give without consignment. Vivian is an advocate and a giver to the foster care system through Freestone Ministries in Lebanon, Illinois. From her $5 price on children's clothing, she donates 100% of resources to school supplies throughout the year. Her business is growing, and so is her giving. She truly is keeping the dream alive by helping others that she is blessing. Congratulations, Vivian. Do you have any words? I just really want to say thank you so much to all of the ladies of the Golden Royalties chapter. I thank you so much for just being... Um, uh, women that are doing so much in the community. I take this as uh, I appreciate the honor. I thank you for the nomination uh, by Dagny Barton. I also uh, appreciate the kind words given by my mentor uh, and person I love dearly, Ms. Joanne Martin. Thank you so much. I love you very much. I just wanted to say that um, to be acknowledged in keeping the dream alive for Martin Luther King it hits home because I was a little black girl born in Alabama. And so when every time I hear his speech that talks about, you know, the part that he was saying that one day down in Alabama uh, with all the racism and this and this and that, you know, black boys and black girls and white boys can, and white girls can hold hands and join together. You know, I really do um, think it's possible. I don't think it's easy. But I do think it is possible. And so I know that um, this war just uh, fills my tank to do more. Again, I thank you so much to all of the wonderful ladies um, of the Golden Royalties for this, for this great award. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. And our final honoree of the night is Mayor Quentin Lucas, nominated by Evangelist Barbara Laura in the category of humanitarian. Mayor, Luke, Mayor Quentin Lucas was sworn in on August 1st, 2019 as the 55th mayor of Kansas City, the youngest elected Kansas City mayor <coughs> in more than a generation. Known affectionately as Mayor Q to Kansas, Kansas Cityans, he prioritizes making Kansas City neighborhoods safer, creating more accessible and affordable housing and public transportation, maintaining efficiency and transparency in governance and improving basic services. Born and raised in Kansas City, Mayor Lucas has spent most of his life in the city's urban core. As a child, his family moved often and even experienced homelessness. Despite these challenges, he went on to Cornell Law School before returning home to Kansas City. Mayor Lucas serves as chairman of the United States Conference of Mayors, Criminal and Social Justice Committee, and co-chair of Every Town for Gun Safety's Mayors Against Illegal Guns, where he advocates for local, state, and federal policy change to build safer communities. He is also a local and national leader in public transportation advocacy. He led Kansas City in launching an initiative, Zero Fair Transit Initiative, making Kansas City the first major American city to make all public transportation fare free. He currently serves as chairman of the United States Conference of Mayors Criminal and Social Justice Committee. Additionally, Mayor Lucas has also led the city council in adopting the city's first ever Tenants Bill of Rights. Mayor Quentin Lucas is truly keeping the dream alive. Hi, I'm Kansas City Mayor Quint Lucas, and I want to thank the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Women's Association for awarding me the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Keeping the Dream Alive Award. It is an honor to be recognized by such an impactful group working to support business women.
Your group has worked for years to bring together businesswomen and to provide opportunities for growth professionally and personally through leadership, education, and networking support. Thank you for all you do for our business community, and have a great day. Oh, how proud we are. How proud we are of not just him, but all seven of our comment of our um, honorees tonight. Uh, and I want to say that, that from the reading, they are all keeping the dream alive. But I sent you with your link a souvenir booklet. So what you heard was a partial. And the full nomination is in your booklet along with some full biographies. The time has now come for the speaker of the hour. And boy are you in for a treat. Tomas Estrada Brooks is a native of East St. Louis, Illinois. She graduated with honors from Hampton University and has a Bachelor of Arts degree in communication and public relations. She was formerly employed as a pharmaceutical representative with Pfizer Pharmaceutical Company and Abbott Laboratories. Tomas is now an entrepreneur. After a car accident slowed her down just a bit, she opened Sugar and Spice Embroidery which is a customizing embroidery business. You will see that the stoles we have on tonight in Golden Royalties, she made those. You design it or she will, but it always comes out beautiful. Our chapter members are wearing those stoles. She is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Top Ladies of Distinction Incorporated, and has served as president in both organizations. She was recognized as future Gr Greek leader and Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority uh, Sarah of the Year. She was also named Top Lady of the Year for the East St. Louis Chapter of Top Ladies and was chosen first runner-up for the Top Lady of the Year at the area uh, competition. She is our newest Golden Royalties member and doing a great job. She will now introduce tonight's speaker. Tomasa, you are on. Good evening once again. Welcome to the Golden Royalties 30th Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration. And our Pearl Celebration. Tonight, we have a dynamic keynote speaker. So I say to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy our distinguished guest speaker. Mrs. Sylvia Buffington Lester is a native of Richmond, Virginia. She is a retired forensic scientist who served as the section supervisor at the Central Laboratory of the Virginia Department of Forensic Science, which is located in Richmond, Virginia. While there, her primary focus was in the discipline of friction scan analysis. Prior to serving in this capacity, she also spent over 16 years as a fingerprint examiner for the Federal Bureau of Investigations in Washington, D.C. Mrs. Buff Buffington Lester also majored in vocal education at Virginia State University. So not only is she an accomplished scientist, she is also an incomparable jazz vocalist who takes pride in assisting and training other jazz vocalists. Mrs. Buffington Lester has achieved numerous awards and accolades. To name a few, she has appeared and been featured in several media outlets, such as the Discovery Channel, the Associated Press, 
and the National Geographic magazine. She also holds membership in several organizations. But most of all, she is a proud member of the American Business Women's Association, ABWA, and she has been a member since 1987. She is also a member of the International Association for Identification, and she currently serves as an adjunct faculty member for the Virginia Commonwealth University, where she received the VCU College of Humanities and Science Distinguished Adjunct Award. This servant community leader maintains a motto and a spirit of can do dare to be different a a and attributes and believes that by using one's existing talents and abilities, dreams can turn into realities. I, without further ado, introduce to some and present to others my ABAW sister, Mrs. Sylvia Buffington Lester. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, can, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. All right. So like I said, good evening. It is really a pleasure to be here with you once again. You know, I'm no stranger to Golden Royalties uh, chapter. And, and, you know, I had to think about it the other day and I had to laugh because I remembered back in the 1990s when I was on uh, ABWA's national board, um, I used to come to Kansas City and I remember eating Gates barbecue. Charlotte introduced me to it at that time and I thought it was the best thing I could have ever put in my mouth. <laughs> Charlotte truly is a jewel and I am so, so glad to call her my friend. And Charlotte, I hope you uh, get better soon. My prayers are certainly with you. You know, I, I, like I was saying, I, I didn't hesitate to uh, accept the invitation because Charlotte is my friend. And I think that this occasion is just so significant. And, and that the fact that you've been doing it for 30 years is just amazing. And I'm glad to have a chance to come tonight to share some ideas with you about who's keeping the dream alive. Well, it is very evident to me that there's plenty of people keeping a dream alive, as you saw tonight, uh, as, as the people have participated and the honorees and such, and I congratulate each of you for that. But you know, I was thinking, not only are they keeping the dream alive, but it's up to each and every one of us to continue to keep that dream alive. Because we're all given some knowledge, skills, and ability to bring to the table. And some of us have been given extraordinary talents and abilities that we certainly uh, can share. So tonight, I hope to leave you with some thoughts about not only keeping, keeping Dr. Dr. Uh, King's dream alive, but also keeping your own dream alive because it's important that we understand that that's pretty much, I believe, what Dr. King's dream was really all about. It was about a time when every one of us could see our dreams become a reality. But you know, before we can talk about keeping a dream alive, we may wanna think about exactly what is the dream? What is it that we want to dream about? Dr. King preached about social justice, empowerment, and peace. And he envisioned a future where all human beings were treated with respect, dignity, and integrity, regardless of race or creed. Social and economic opportunity and equity really was the main theme of his dream. And as Dr. Uh, King reminded us, 
if people don't have a job or an income, they have neither life nor liberty nor the possibility of the pursuit of happiness. They merely exist. And I'm sure that as we embrace Dr. King's dream, there's parts of it that may be personal to us. Parts of us, part of his I have a dream speech that speaks directly individually to us. King's I have a dream speech galvanized a nation uh, 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 to the civil rights movement and became the slogan for equality and freedom. And the words that he spoke on that hot day in August in 1963 are just as powerful today as when he said it then. That day he said, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Oh, he delivered some powerful words that day. Now, I admit that the United States is a different place than it was in 1963. Since the 60s, the black middle class has grown tremendously and African-Americans have moved into more white collar jobs and more educated uh, and have more education than ever before. As we've witnessed right here tonight on, on this Zoom uh, meeting, Numerous African-Americans now hold positions of power from mayor to governor to corporate chief executive. And who could have imagined in 1963 that the United States of America would have ever elected a president and vice president of color? Oh, we've come a long way. According to uh, economist John J. Donahue III and James Heckman, the greatest economic gains for African-Americans since the early 1960s were in the years 1965 to 1975. And it occurred mainly in the South. Now, why was that? You have to wonder, why was that? Why was it mainly in the South? Well. I personally think that it was because of the status and conditions that were facing Southern African-Americans at that time. They were especially hungry for equity and equality. Because of racial discrimination, segregation and such, they had limited opportunities to advance to middle class prior to 1961. Having been born here in Virginia doing segregation, I can, I remember the challenges that uh, people face regardless of their personal uh, economic status. Cause you see, it didn't matter whether you were a doctor or whether you clean the offices of a doctor, you were black and that's how you were measured. Now, Although we have made great strides and a lot of Dr. King's dreams have come true as some have attested to tonight, we gotta be careful not to become complacent. We must keep that dream alive. You know, often I, I wonder, what would Dr. King say to us today? As, as, as if, if, he, if he was to come back and look around, what would he say? as we witness the high poverty rate still, the decline in family structure, uh, a constant black on black violence, too many with the victim, woe is me mindset, and the high incarceration rate. Oh, we gotta keep the dream alive, people. We truly need to keep it alive. 
But in order to do that, we need to stay encouraged and encourage our young people. And most of all, remember that the freedoms that we do now enjoy did not come easy. See, we need to remember that the struggle and, 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 and the way we honor those who fought so hard is by taking advantage of the opportunities that came from that blood, sweat, and tears. Those who led the fight, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears was shed so that we can enjoy. In 1963, when I was 13 years old, I couldn't have even imagined being a forensic scientist. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know what that was. So, like I said, we've come a long way, but it's not time to rest. We've got to keep going, keep the dream alive. You know, it saddens me when I see people not taking advantage of the educational and, 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 and um, the job opportunities that are available to us today. And, 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 it, and it saddens me when I see people not caring how they present themselves. I remember very well how we were taught. We were taught that it didn't matter from where you came, but to always bring your A game. And most importantly, to demonstrate self-respect. In his speech, King said, in the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. Let me say that again. We must conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. Oh, I know oftentimes, there are people who find it hard to see themselves as the dream promoter or, or even dare to dream themselves. And a lot of times it's because they get hung up on who or what they don't know, what they don't have, what they can't do, instead of considering who and what they do know, what they do have and what they can do, and then use that as the stepping stone to the next level. I'm sure you agree with me that self-doubt is crippling and focusing only on being the victim is paralyzing. Limitation versus aspiration focus will affect our motivation. You know, I often think about the time when I was a little girl, we had a store here in Richmond called Murphy's. Uh, they, they, they called it a five and dime. And I'm sure wherever you are from, uh, you had something similar to that. Where, well, when my mother and I would be downtown, uh, we would stop in Murphy's to get a hot dog. And there was a counter that we would go to and get our little hot dog or whatever. But over on the other side, I could see the counter and had these little stools that looks like they turned around. And I thought, wow, mommy, I want to sit up there on the stool so I can twirl around. And she said, no, 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 we don't have time for that. Come on, we just get our hot dog because we got to catch a bus. Now, I don't know. When I think back about it now, I don't know if she even realized what she was doing, I don't know if she did this purposely, but what she did, think about it. She didn't say you cannot sit over there because you're a little color girl, because that's what they called us back then. She didn't say that. She said, we don't have time. She made it sound like it was her decision. And when I, thought, when I think about it as an adult, what she did for me was to make me believe that I could do anything. You see, I grew up with no limitations. I really thought if I wanted it, 
All I had to do was bring my A game and focus on it and it would be mine. Because at an early age, now later on, of course, as I got older and understood segregation, all that, I understood why I couldn't go sit over there on those stools at that time. But my mother didn't put that in my, during those formative years, she didn't plant, you can't, you are not sufficient, you are different. She didn't plant that in my mind. She made it sound like it was her, her decision. Now, I, I, I share that story with you to, to emphasize uh, uh, the importance of, of self-esteem and, 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 and what it can mean, how we talk to our children, how we think about ourselves. Because it's hard to keep a dream alive if you can't uh, see it, if you can't even believe that the dream is anything but a dream. We have to see it as a possibility. We have to believe that it really can become a reality. Because you see, that's what Dr. King did. The, and the key ingredients to any successful endeavor is preparation, perseverance, and persistence. And I could, I, that's a whole nother speech. I could tell you about the times when I had to do just that. But you know, the early uh, freedom fighters understood that in spite of the nightmares that they faced every day, they believed that the dream could and would become a reality. That's what kept them going. Dr. King told us, so go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, go back to South Carolina, go back to Georgia, go back to Louisiana, go back to the slums of the ghettos in our northern cities, knowing that sometimes this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream and it's a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. That was his dream that someday we would enjoy the American dream. And so many of us have, and I'm glad about it, but understand Obama happened because of all the small little victories over a number of years. Some of those victories are well known and some are the results of just dedicated unsung heroes. Like Claudette Colvin, a young civil rights activist who on March 5th, 1955, refused to give up her seat to a white passenger. Now that was 14 months before Rosa Parks did it. Coven was arrested and became one of the four plaintiffs on the federal case Browler versus Gale that was filed in February 1956 during the boycott, which ultimately led to the uh, ruling that the Montgomery uh, uh, segregated bus system was unconstitutional. You see, extraordinary things can happen because of ordinary people. As we strive to keep the, the dream alive, I think we need to continuously uh, conduct, 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 <laughs> sorry, mouth got twisted. We need to conduct a self-examination. We need to ask ourselves some questions like, what am I doing to keep the dream alive? What can I do? Am I taking advantage of all the opportunities available to me? Have I lost faith and hope or think that the dream is not for everyone? There's so many people who that is exactly their, their issue. They've lost hope and faith. They don't think the dream is for everyone. Oh, it can get complicated. And why? Because it's like the haves keep having and the have not seem to have less. But we have to keep going. We have to, we have to do what we need to do. 
You see, in 1963, we were all placed in the same box, like I talked about before. It didn't matter whether you're a doctor or you clean offices. Everybody was in one box. Today, we can choose our box or, like me, refuse to be put in a box of any kind. I just refuse to let anybody define me or put me in a box or decide what category I belong. I belong anywhere I want to be, anywhere I'm prepared to be. So, so we have to we have to understand that to keep the dream alive, we got to bring our A game, though, as I said before. And bringing our A game will diminish reasons and excuses for exclusions. Now, now, what do I mean by that? Well, think about it. If you bring your A game, you're doing the best, you're prepared, you, you, you bring in everything you need and you don't get a chance, somebody deny you a particular opportunity, now you got something to fight about. You got something you can hang your hat on. You got something you can say, wait a minute, look at my credentials. Look what I bring to the table. Tell me why I'm not qualified. Tell me why you are turning me away. But hey, if you come, as they say on the street, half-stepping, you bring in your C game, your D game, your F game, even if the color of your skin is the reason why they want to dismiss you, they can skate around that. They can use, they can use the, the other reasons. They're not qualified. Look at them. Look at the record. They're not prepared. So that is why I say bring your A game. That will help diminish reasons for people to not allow you in. Whenever I've ever been refused anything, the first thing I did was check myself. Am I, am I, am I uh, uh, insufficient in some way? What is it that I'm lacking? What is it that I need? And I get busy at trying to make sure I'm prepared for the next time. And I'll keep on at it. Before I got voted, um, I was the first black president of the International Association of Identification, the Chesapeake Bay Division. But it took me 10 years to even get on that board. Every time, I would get voted out, even when I went before the nominating committee and they picked me. Then they had a nomination from the floor. And guess what? <laughs> Somebody got nominated over me. And family, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I kept going along. They said, you too new. You, you, you don't have this. You don't have that. And I kept gathering everything. And family, I was saying, okay. It can't be because I'm new, because I've been here a while, and you put people on the board that has joined uh, uh, less time than me. It can't be because I'm a woman, because there are other women. So I'm thinking, it don't need but a couple of more things. They didn't want me to go there, because I was prepared to put up the mirror. And family, family. Somebody stood up and said, you know, there is no reason why you shouldn't be on this board. It was fear. I understand because they had never had anybody look like me in their leadership before. But I brought my A game and I'm still bringing my A game whenever I deal with anything because I don't want anybody to say you're not qualified. You know? And so I, I, in order to keep the dream alive, that is one of the key things, not only Dr. King's dream, but your own personal dream. That's what it's going to take. Now, to keep the dream alive, I also say that it's, each, it's up to each and every one of us. Each of us can keep the dream alive by doing our part. So let's review the past. Let's celebrate the gains uh, 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 that, that came about. Let's focus on the work to be done today. And then let's move forward with optimism and insight and energy and trust that someday this world will wake up 
and the dream of true equality and freedom and endless opportunities for everybody will become a reality. And until then, we just got to keep the dream alive. Now, I try to uh, package up and bring you a message that I thought may uh, be inspiring. And, 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 and just like the preacher in church, it's nothing you don't already know, but sometimes it's good to be reminded. So I hope that I did that. But before I relinquish the screen back, let me put a little bow on it. And the bow will look a little bit like this. I was born by a river in a little tent. And just like that river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long, long time coming, but I know, I know, I know change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living, but before, before we die, we need to make some changes. Come on, you, 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 and I. It's been a long, long, long time coming, but I know, I know, I know change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. Now I went to my sister. I said, sister, help me, please. But she just looked at me and then knocked me back down on my knees. There's been times when I thought I could not last for long. But now I think I'm able. I think I can carry on. It's been a long, long, long time coming, but I know, I know, I know change is going to come. We just have to strive to keep the dream alive. And I know that together we can keep the dream alive. Let's keep the dream, keep it alive. Thank you, and may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm sorry you couldn't hear me. I said, all right, Sylvia Buffington Lester. I love you, my sister. Thank you so much. My, my, all I can say is wow. What an awesome message. What an awesome talent. And with r reminders and, and words to live by. I'm on my A game and I'm gonna be on my A game tomorrow too. <laughs> that added surprise of that beautiful voice just blows me away. Thank you so, so much. That was awesome. Our chapter president, um, Miss Linda Jackson, Thank now you. has some words and uh, maybe of all, I would a like few to other surprises. Sylvia Linda, I'm going to turn it over to you. For that inspiring, awesome speech and the solo. I wish I could sing, but you brought it home and thank you so much. I would like to thank people. I would like to recognize our national president, Cheryl Blair, our national vice president, Rochelle Jameson Holmes, our national secretary treasurer, Joyce Wright. Thank you all for coming to this very, very special occasion. And as president of this awesome chapter, it is my pleasure to offer congratulations to all of the MLK honorees. 
On this, our 30th anniversary, I'd like to thank every one of you for helping us to keep the dream alive. Each one of you honorees have made major contributions to our communities by the positive impacts you have unselfishly given of your efforts and time. Again, thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. We have a special surprise in honor of our founder, Charlotte Collins. We will present three special gifts as a thank you for all of her hard work. Our first presenter is one of our members, Justina Slaughter, and she will present the first of the three. Justina, you are on. I'm so proud to be a member of this chapter. Right now, I'd like to present the state of Kansas proclamation by the governor. To the people of Kansas, greetings. Whereas though this program, thousands of dollars for education, scholarships have been afforded to many deserving college students to help with tuition. And whereas in addition to providing scholarships to students and many honorees have also been recognized for their efforts in keeping the dream alive. In the category of music, religion, entrepreneurship, community service, sports and humanitarian, education and medical and health care, and whereas the Golden Royalty Chapter of the American Business Association have brothered women of diverse occupations and have provided opportunities for them to help themselves and others grow personally and professionally through leadership, education, networking, support, and national recognition. Now, therefore, I, Laura Kelly, governor of the state of Kansas, do hereby proclaim January the 14th, January 14th, 2023, as the 30th anniversary of keeping the dream alive in the state of Kansas, and I urge all citizens to join in this observance by the governor, Laura Kelly. Thank you so much, Jacina. That is awesome. Next, I will present to Charlotte and our chapter a congratulatory letter from Governor Michael L. Parsons from the state of Missouri. I am pleased to congratulate the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Association on celebrating 30 years. Since being chartered on May 8, 1993, the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Association has brought together women of diverse occupations and provided opportunities for them to grow personally and professionally. The association has worked diligently for 30 years, helping many deserving college students with tuition through educational scholarships, along with efforts in keeping the dream alive in categories of music, religion, entrepreneurship, community service, sports, humanitarian education, and medical health care. Your association's dedication and commitment to the peoples of Missouri is to be commended. Congratulations on your 30th anniversary, Michael Parsons, governor. I don't think, well, anyway, it's from governor. It's also in your souvenir book. Yes. Our final one is from um, Joanne Martin, woman of the year. <clears throat> And all around, good person, jack of all trades. So Joanne, uh, you have another presentation. Yes, I think I do. Um, and uh, before I give my presentation, I think there is a surprise from us all, for us all. Uh, I'm going to give, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to give uh, our 
past national president, Trina Nakazi, the floor at this moment. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations on a wonderful, beautifully presented 30th anniversary of your King celebration for the ABWA Golden Royalties chapter. Um, I know I'm not sure if Miss Charlotte can hear. She but, can hear you. Um, she can. Okay, wonderful. Um, one of the things I talked about last year when um, being a member or being on, on your program was she wanted someone from the King family to actually be able to come forward and participate in the program in some way. So, um, Miss Charlotte, I am pleased to present to you a congratulatory message um, from Dr. King's sister-in-law, Mrs. Naomi King. She is the wife of the late Alfred A.D. King III and the sister-in-law to Dr. King. Um, she wishes to salute you and the ABWA Golden Royalties chapter and extend a happy 30th anniversary of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. event that continues to ask the question, who keeps the dream alive? I'm going to share the video now with sound. My name is Naomi Ruth Barbara King, sister-in-law to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Coretta Scott King, and Dr. Christine King Farris. I am so delighted to bring greetings on behalf of the King's family, celebrating who is keeping the dream. I certainly want to thank the American Business Women Association and the Golden Royalties chapter for including me in your 30th annual celebration beautiful program. Dr. King stated about half a century ago that he has been to the mountaintop and has seen the promised land. He said, I may not get that with you, but we as a people, we shall get to the promised land. We have made much progress, but much is still desired. Let us continue to uphold the dream together towards tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. And um, because she recently had surgery as well, she wasn't feeling wow. 100%, Miss Charlotte, but um, I want to, on behalf of the A.D. King Foundation and the Zambians um, supporting, le promoting leadership in um, the U.S., um, we hope that this makes a difference on your 30th anniversary, and um, hopefully it brings a smile to your face. We pray for continued blessings and healing for you as you recover from surgery, and um, to all of the program part participants and most especially, Miss Sylvia Buffington Lester for um, putting the bow on tonight's program. So um, congratulations, everyone. So glad that you took time to invest in yourself and um, experience what tonight had to offer. Um, thank you so much, um, Colonel Martin. I appreciate it very much for um, letting us throw this surprise in. I just want to say I kept a secret. Nobody knew. Nobody but me and you. That's it. <laughs> I did keep the secret. <laughs> uh, I just want to say real quick, Trina, that touched my heart. I know it did. That touched my heart. I have been waiting for three decades to get a King family member to attend our event. And you made it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Charlotte. And as always, I give it all to God. He gets us connected <laughs> within our network. So use it for making a positive impact, people. That's all I have. I'm happy for you, Charlotte. I knew you were going to make her cry. So don't make her cry because that hurts. Uh, <laughs> don't make her laugh either because that hurts too. Uh, okay. 
uh, removed opinions. Removed. Okay, I'm still, I have one more. We've heard from uh, Kansas City, and we've heard from Missouri. This is a proclamation presented this second day of December, whereas the Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Women Association chartered on May 8th, 1993, and is now celebrating 30 years of honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mrs. Coretta Scott King with a Keeping the Dream Alive program and whereas through this program thousands of dollars for educational scholarships have been afforded to many deserving college students to help with tuition and Whereas, in addition to providing scholarships to students, many honorees are recognized for their efforts in the, keep, in the Keeping the Dream Alive program in the categories of music, religion, entrepreneurship, community service, sports, humanitarian, education, and medical health care. And, whereas... The Golden Royalties Chapter of the American Business Women Association has brought together women of diverse occupations and provided opportunities for them to help themselves and others grow personally and professionally through leadership, education, networking, support, and national recognition. Therefore, I, J.B. Pritzer, Governor of the State of Illinois, congratulates and join the Golden Royalties chapter on honoring their 30th anniversary of the Keeping the Dream Alive program celebrated on January 14th, 2023. Signed, J.B. Pritzer, Governor of the State of Illinois. Thank you, Joanne. That was awesome. And thank you, Jacina. And thank you, Trina, for all of the accolades and proclamations for our fearless leader, Charlotte. These are well deserved. So, Charlotte, congratulations. We're happy to see you. And you will get the proclamations from all of us. Thank you so much. Back to you, Madam MC. Well, I so far have really enjoyed the program. Things have gone well, and that is just a blessing in itself. Um, if you enjoyed the program too, kind of wave your hand. Let me see. Okay, then. Uh, before our closing remarks, we will be blessed with a traditional closing song sung by my brother from another mother, Minister <laughs> Germaine Manor. Jermaine has successfully carved a niche as a unique contributor to the fine arts and education communities. As a voice teacher, he is established as a dynamic and in-demand instructor and vocal coach for both professional singers and amateurs alike. From adults to toddlers, he shares his knowledge and skills, and the best thing is, he loves doing what he does. He's the Minister of Worship Arts at New Life in Christ Interdenominational Church in O'Fallon, Illinois. He stirs up dreams in others, both young and old. He writes music. He plays music. He sings music. He teaches music. He orchestrates musicals and drama performances. And he shares it all with others. He on his A-game. He has such a gentle spirit that the God in him shines through all he does. His talents are not just shared in the church walls, but outside of them as well. Man or Minor, Man or Minor, is a full-service music and performing arts company that services the needs of churches, schools, organizations, as well as the individual singer-performer. He is not afraid to tell you his gift is a gift from God. 
Jermaine, will you close us with our traditional song? Good evening, everyone, and a special good evening to the Golden Royalty Chapter of ABWA. My name is Jermaine Nanner, and I was honored and blessed to be a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award recipient last year in the area of music and religion. Well, I'm back this year to celebrate again, but this year I'm going to render a musical selection. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Those words still ring true today. That's our job. Let's move about life with love and empathy and selflessness. That's what Dr. King did. Let's keep that dream alive. I pray you enjoy. Reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can just try Take a little time out of your busy day to give an encouragement to someone who's lost their way. Or would I be talking to a stone if I asked you to share a problem that wasn't your own? We can change things if we start giving, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. Down, remember, his shoes can fit your feet. Try a little kindness, and you will see it's something that comes so naturally. We can change things if we start giving. Thank you so much, my brother, Pastor Jay, my Pastor Jay. Yay! <laughs> Our final remarks will be by Mrs. Kathy McBride. Kathy has been a member of the American Business Women's Association since 2005 and a member of Greater Des Moines Noon Chapter since 2016. In 17 years, her involvement includes roles at a variety of levels. This includes serving as the 2018-19 District 3 Vice President on the National Board of Directors and as a trustee to the 2018-19 Stephen Bufton Memorial Education Fund. <coughs> At the local level, she has served on every executive board position in both her chapter and in the Des Moines Area Council of ABWA. That's amazing. She most recently chaired a special committee to celebrate her chapter's 30-year anniversary. 
She was recently elected 2022-23 National Board of Directors as District 3 Vice President for the second time. Her busy volunteer schedule includes more than ABWA. She volunteers currently for several political candidates, shares can candidate information, and assists in her voter registration as a neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor turf leader. Her volunteering also includes committee work and serving on walk days for both the Greater Iowa Alzheimer's Association and Autism Speaks. Kathy's career life includes 30 plus years as a manager in telecommunications and currently as a Norwex consultant. Between these positions, a favorite and meaningful work was nine years as a paraeducator supporting autistic students. There is one student now age 21 that still sends Kathy text messages offering birthday wishes with the question, what year were you born? And, Miss McBee, what movie we gonna go see? She and her husband, Ron, celebrate a happy life traveling and relaxing. She views time with family and friends as special life gifts. Immediate family defines her as a spouse, a mother, a stepmother, and her most treasured title is grandma. Seven grandchildren ages 27 to 8. So grandma, you are on. Let's welcome Miss Kathy McBride, our District 3 Vice President. You're on. All righty. Well, you know, when um, I was asked to um, write some closing remarks, I did so knowing that I've attended this event in, in years in the past and knew it was spectacular. And I didn't assume that it would be any different this year. And yet I have to tell you all, I think you topped it. Uh, we've experienced a really special evening, this 30-year fundraising and education event in honor of Dr. King, and uh, hosted by the great um, Golden Royalties chapter of the American Business Women's Association. This room, our Zoom room, room has been filled with people for whom keeping the dream alive is significant in life, and those honored tonight demonstrate a special, a specialty focused, committed joy in doing so. Honorees, Mayor Quentin Lucas, Vera Willis, Yolandia Wood, Harvey Lockward, Vivian Moore, Lenroy Johnson, Frank White Jr. Congratulations again. Martin Luther King asked, what are you doing for others? Clearly, you have and are doing for others in ways of significance and impact. And there seems not to be enough words, at least in my vocabulary, to appropriately say thank you. Yet everyone here hopes you feel the appreciation in honoring you this evening. To those of you who nominated the honorees, that includes Jean Anderson, Barbara Laura, Angelica Mobley, Pastor Jermaine Mayner, and Dagny Barton, applause to you also um, for making your nominations known. You see the difference made by these other people, and we hope that you know taking time to nominate makes you a difference maker as well. So thank you. There's much danger in, in trying to name names because invariably um, you might leave someone out. But reviewing tonight's program booklet created by the remarkable member Joanne Martin, I'm not going to name names, but I want to give some highlights just to remind you of what we've experienced tonight. There are planners and organizers, patrons, sponsors, supporters. There are participants in the program who presented the colors, performed a skit, sang, gathered us in prayer, and spoke. 
and Sylvia Bufton Lester as keynote speaker, we are touched um, by the words in your sharing. We have national board members here tonight who were introduced earlier. Thank you for being here and for supporting. And to Renee Street, who wasn't able to be here, we also give her a thanks for her letter of recognition and honor to the Golden Royalties chapter in this significant 30-year event. Um, I hadn't thought about this. This isn't in my notes until I hear this song about uh, reach out and touch somebody's hand. So I'm going to, uh, you're going to think I'm a little mm, off and, I, and I'm okay with that because those who know me well know I'm a little off at any given moment. But what I'd like to have happen right now is everybody take yourself off a of speaker view and go to the view where you see where you sit with everybody else on this screen. Step one, do that. Go to the gallery view. And be thinking about that song we just heard, Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand. And I want everybody to put their hand up in the air and reach to the left and touch that person next to you. And I want you to put your hand down and touch that person who's in the row below you or the row above you, whichever you choose, pick a place. And now do the same to the left. Or above, or across, or over, or under, around, and through. And when you leave here this evening, be thinking about the opportunity that each of us has at any given moment to go out and reach and touch somebody else and how we make a difference. Um, and I encourage you the next time that you're in a group all face to face and sitting next to each other, maybe you try this little exercise in the real room, in the real live room of life at the table that you're sitting at reach out and touch that person who's sitting next to you and tell them why you think they're important, why they're important to you, why they're important to the group that they're in. And um, in return, when you receive that word from the person, give it back. We got to keep this going because we are in a chaotic, crazy world. And what do we have better than to reach out and touch one another and to make a difference? So I was inspired by the song. This might have been a little silly because it certainly wasn't planned, but I hope you take the message of it that I intend back with you when you leave tonight. Reach out and touch someone. You know, the, the um, Gordon, Golden Royalties chapter, as you've heard tonight, has been raising funds for 30 years to do scholarships. And we got what? We've, we've heard $27,000 in scholarships. Abraham Lincoln said the best way to predict the future is to create it. And I want to say golden royalties. Every time you give one of those scholarships to some young woman, you have helped predict that future and you make a difference. So you've reached and touched them in ways that they may not have imagined. And I believe that all of that just goes forward with each of us as we, as we are blessed we bless others. So thanks for, for your start in that. In this environment, um, <laughs> there's so many things that we might think to do to keep the dream alive. And I'm going to challenge you to ask yourself a couple questions. Just as Dr. King asked, what are you doing for others? Ask yourself, what are you doing for others? And just as we've said, heard repeatedly this evening, how will we keep the dream alive? Ask yourself, how will you keep the dream alive? I wish you the very best year ever. We're going to do this practicing of reaching out in touch and following up with each other to see how that is. Thank you so much for an opportunity to, to make a few comments and Happy New Year. Thank you, and I'm going to turn this back to the spectacular Joanne MC woman. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kathy. Oh, I'm trying to get back there.
Uh, I really appreciate you. Kathy has been, uh, when you're in the position I've been in tonight, you kind of get nervous and things just started falling apart. And Kathy has been my inspiration since early this morning, all day long. She has told me it's going to be okay. <laughs> so, as we close tonight's program, we have Reverend Alvin Bradford, Pastor of Redemption and Restoration Fellowship Church, who is also the CEO of Video Production by Church Folks and responsible for navigating us through what we just went through tonight. I want to remind you that full bios and full nomination words are in your souvenir book that you should have received with your link. And if you have not received that with your link, send me an email back with the same thing you had the link in, and I will send you that book. Reverend Bradford, will you close us out with prayer, please? Yes, I will, and I'd like to say thank you again for allowing me to participate with the Golden Royalties this year. We spent a lot of years together. I am grateful to be able to participate this time. All, all the participants were just outstanding, did a great job. Uh, above all, though, I want to say to Sister Collins, so grateful to see you. Uh, the moment we heard you was in surgery, we have been in prayer. Uh, we're grateful and we're thankful uh, that you made it. Thank you for your words. I knew you couldn't keep it to yourself, but I'm grateful that you was there. Uh, I just want to say thanks to all the words that I heard from everybody here tonight. Uh, it is important that we encourage one another, that we support one another, that we keep our hands, as uh, Miss Kathy had said, and as the uh, Mr. My uh, Reverend Miner spoke about, uh, reach out and touch. Uh, we need to do a little bit more than that because we're getting touched by a whole lot of other stuff that we don't need. But friendship and love is something that we got to have. My wife is also here. She's been also been able to hear and uh, uh, hear what's been said and done. I was not asked to do a lot of talking. I was asked to pray us out of here. I'm going to do that. And Sister Collins, thank you again for your patience and your work with me. If you would, for those who are believers, that you bow your heads, let's thank the Lord for what he's done. Father God, we are grateful that you have always been there for us in season and out of season. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers. Thank you, Lord, for all the talent that we heard here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us the opportunity to show forth those things that you have blessed us with. Father God, as we continue to do good according to what you have asked us to do in your word, show us, Lord, how to put others ahead of ourselves to give us the love. You said in your word that there's no greater love than the one who's able to give laid out his life for his friend. But you also said uh, that we are to love one another as you have loved us. And thank you, Lord, for the opportunity tonight to be able to do that. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom of network problems that we've had previous years that we was able to get through. Thank you, Lord, for all those that took away from their life for these few hours that we be able to have that joy from the many different states that's represented to here. But Lord, now as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, we ask you, Father God, that you allow us to stay connected with you each and every day and every minute, that we bring joy to your heart by the actions that we give to one another. I pray this in our son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, men, can you still hear me? Okay, I just want to say a couple of things, not many. Uh, but I want to say congratulations to all of the honorees. Um, I received a text a few minutes ago, just a few minutes ago, from one of the honorees, Vivian Moore, is donating $100 to us for our scholarship fund. Um, that's just an awesome thing, a kind-hearted, godly thing, and I thank her for that. I wanted you to know that. And I want to say, and maybe I shouldn't, but I want to say, of all the things we did tonight, Trina Nakazi touched my founder greater than anyone else. 
I want you to know that. And I have not talked to her or seen her, but I know that what Trina did touched Charlotte. And that's important for me and the rest of the chapter. Amen. It's our 30-year <clears throat> anniversary, and nothing better could have happened than for her to hear a king speak. So I thank you. I know Charlotte would if I would let her talk, but I'm not going to let her. But I thank you. I thank you. And I thank uh, Nancy, Miss Nancy Griffin, one of our past uh, national presidents, who donated her $150 that she won right out. I want to thank her. I remember Cheryl Blair won last year, and she donated hers. That's that giving spirit that's keeping the dream alive, and I thank all of you. I thank you for paying your money, your raffle tickets. I thank you for everything you have done, the sponsorships, and the program went so much smoother than I expected. Where is Kathy McBride? I can't see her. I see everybody else. But she told me that early this morning. I'm talking 6 o'clock this morning. <laughs> and now I believe you. <laughs> Our speaker, Sylvia, you my sister and I love you. You were awesome. And your talent is just unmarkable. And I don't know if Adrian is still on here, but her story is so inspiring. Her voice and her talent were great, but her story just touched my heart when I was writing it to put in your, in your souvenir book. You just keep up. Keep up your A game Thank and so keep much. making the dream come true for you. That's what you can do. Lastly, I have two co-hosts tonight, um, Sharice Manor and somebody else, Tomasa Strada Brooks. Um, they performed Lizzie. after a one-hour notification. They had one hour to prepare to do what they did tonight. And I thank you for stepping up. I appreciate that. Correct. Right, you can unmute now. Correction. That was Linda, our president, Jackson, who stepped up. And oh, yeah. Sharice did, down. too. I'm sorry. Miss Joanne, I'm just going to, you're just going to have to forgive me for not being obedient. You know, I can't stay, <laughs> stay uh, quiet very long. But I'm not going to talk very long because I lose my voice. Uh -huh, right. I, I am thankful for everything that was brought forth tonight. The members stepped up and did their A game. Trina just topped it off with the tribute from uh, the King member, the King yeah, family yeah. member. But everything was awesome. The participants were beautiful everything was awesome and i hated that i had to have surgery before this event but i bugged my doctor so bad they were glad to release me i said i can't stay in this hospital any longer i gotta attend the martin luther king event but that's why we are all helpers one for another when one is down someone else should be able to step up and Dr. King once said, we are not makers of history. We are made by history. Right, and we right. all stand on, on the shoulders of those that came before us, that paved the way for us, that we would have a, a better life. So I am just thankful we made it for 30 hard, long years. But the bottom line, the end results, we're giving out scholarships to help further young women's education. That's the bottom line. So I want to thank you. And Kamisha, where are you? Don't you tell my don't you tell your husband I talked because my son told me not to say a word to keep my oh, did I? shut. <laughs> but you know, I can't, I'm not obedient. I'm not obedient. I gotta say it. This is my passion. And for me not to say anything, that would just, you know, tear me up. So anyway. 
I loved everything, Joanne, the members as well. So I just want to thank all everybody for coming out, for attending our event. Some of you are faithful members that have supported us down through the years. I haven't forgotten. I know who's done what. And I really, really thank everybody. I couldn't get in on the first part to see the color guards and, and, and our scholarship recipient, Jamaica, because I couldn't get in. That, that, that link didn't work for me. I, I had to paste, cut and paste it and, and do all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I finally made it in. But thank you. Thank, long you. Enough. thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Love you, Charlotte. You just get well. Love you, Charlotte, so much. Everybody love you, love you, love you, love you more, and more and more and more. Love you more, oh, and more. Yes. Thank you for the vision, Charlotte. Thank you for the vision. Thank you. Th thank, you thank you, Charlotte, so much. And thank you each. I tell you, sitting here as national president, watching this program, I couldn't tell you how impact I was and how proud I am of each and every one of you and how honored I truly am to be serving as ABWA president. I'm telling you, you guys just brought it home tonight. It was an honor, an absolute honor to be here. Thank you so much, Joanne. You were cool, calm, and collected. And I'll tell you what, you had it together. Thank you very much. That's thanks to Kathy McBride. <laughs> McBride, you rocked it. I loved your ending. I just yep. loved it. It was it was perfect. Couldn't have been any better. So thank you. Charlotte, no more talking for you. That's a presidential order. You are done for the evening. <laughs> Kathy is our, is our present District 3 VP, but I do see Kathy Shuley, who has also been our District 3 VP. This is the first time I'm able to see everybody. So it's good. And I also see Ambassador Brenda Smith Keene, who is normally in Africa or Aruba or somewhere. And she chose to be here tonight. <laughs> uh, I see uh, Ambassador Karen Williams. She's always with us. Bless her heart. And if I miss anybody, I am so sorry. Just chalk it up to my head, but not my heart. Oh, I'm Joanne. so pleased with the way this turned out. So thank you, thank you all for coming. Excuse me, we got a first timer ambassador, Eileen Caspers. She's in attendance. Oh, I didn't know. Hi, Eileen. I knew she was here. I just didn't know she was an ambassador now. All right. We appreciate you being here. So all I can say is keep the dream alive tomorrow when you wake up. Be on your A-game. All righty. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you so much, Miss Sylvia. Awesome. That message. was a beautiful book. Yes. It was like yes. Excellent, yes. excellent program. program. Everybody did and three pages job. of notes. Thank you. Char Charlotte, set the bar. Charlotte set the bar high. I was so worried. I said, oh, my God. I don't know if <laughs> I can bring it like I did in the 90s.